Dungeons and Dragons The Tower of Doom was released on the CPS2 hardware back in January of 1994, or maybe December of 1993. Sources don't seem to agree with each other on a specific date. Regardless, Dungeons and Dragons Tower of Doom was actually the third game released on Capcom's shiny new arcade hardware. And it actually remains a fan favorite in the beat-em-up genre. I like to tell people it was a natural evolution of Golden Axe and one of the pioneers of the action RPG genre. This game is an absolute masterpiece and for so many great reasons. What makes Tower of Doom so interesting is that it's an outstanding side-scrolling brawler set in the Dungeons and Dragons universe. This really shouldn't have been possible, but the end results speak for themselves. You take on the role of one of four different characters, a cleric, dwarf, elf, or fighter. Up to four players can join in battle together to take down the evil Archlich Daimos, and I probably just butchered that. Classic enemies from the D&D universe are featured pretty much everywhere, and even boss characters are made up of classic D&D enemies, such as a troll, which can only be killed by burning it, which I thought was really cool, and many others, actually. You get dragons and all kinds of funky fantasy creatures. And honestly, it's little touches like the troll only being able to be killed by being burnt that really make this game feel special. Each of the four characters has different stats that separate them from each other. The fighter is a more balanced character and is a nice entry point for those just getting into the game. He has good range and power and also has the greatest number of hit points. The elf has short range with her physical attacks and is less powerful than the fighter, but has access to seven powerful spells including a magic missile, invisibility, fireball, lightning bolt, polymorph, ice storm, and cloud kill. The cleric has competent fighting skills in relation to the elf and can also use five unique spells, hold, striking, continual light, sticks to snakes, and cure. He's also extremely competent with a shield, being able to block many incoming attacks that the others can't. Finally, there's the Dwarf, who has great vertical reach, crappy horizontal reach, but is the strongest character in close combat situations. He's also able to rack up serious combos rather quickly. Now, the only downside to the various characters is that you can't select a new character when you die which is why all the footage you're seeing here is made up of me playing, well, as the fighter. Two players can't also select the same character, which is important to remember because all of those features would be fixed in the sequel, which we'll tackle next week. As you progress through the game, you earn experience points, which in turn allows you to level up and increase your HP. Characters also have access to secondary weapons such as daggers, hammers, arrows, and burning oils. Enemies also have access to these items though, so you have to really be careful while you play the game because it's really easy to get surrounded and enemies have much more advanced reach than you do. And speaking of enemies, they also have your advanced tactics which include blocking, strong combo attacks, dashing attacks, crouching and evading. This makes even the most basic enemy quite formidable. Throughout the game, as you complete stages, you'll be taken to an item shop where you can spend currency you've earned in-game in order to purchase more of your secondary weapons or even a health potion. One common complaint about the currency system is that while you're fighting enemies and you happen to kill one who drops loot and another one happens to step in, what can happen very easily is that you'll attack the enemy, or at least you'll try to attack the enemy, and instead you'll end up picking up loot. And the reason for that is because both actions are mapped to the same button. That would be fixed in the sequel. As you can tell already, the sequel really improves on this game. Another interesting aspect to Tower of Doom are the branching paths, which occur at key parts of the game. And this increases the replay factor quite significantly. The gameplay is all made possible by a simple four-button control scheme. 
Button 1 controls your attack, 2 your jump, 3 uses your projectile or magic attack, and 4 selects your projectile or magic attack. The controls work just about as well as you could possibly imagine them to. Dungeons & Dragons Tower of Doom is memorable for so many different reasons. From the excellent storyline to the epic scale of the game, there's something here for everyone. The 4 player co-op is absolutely outstanding and holds up wonderfully today. The replay factor is another incredible aspect that so many people overlook. If you own an arcade cabinet, this one is certainly worth hunting down. It's just an amazing game to play with friends. The audio-visual presentation may not be quite as rich as later CPS2 games or Shadow over Mastara, the sequel, but it does look nice. The animation and pixel art is classic Capcom. The slowdown is limited only to end boss deaths, and the colors are just great. The enemy and level designs are also top-notch, and the audio itself is fantastic. Featuring sweeping and epping tracks throughout to just awesome voice samples. This was a game that was ahead of its time, and it holds up superbly well today. If you're interested in checking this game out, you can pick it up alongside its sequel digitally on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, or on PC via Steam as part of the outstanding Dungeons & Dragons Chronicles of Mistara. It's an excellent set that's well worth the $15 entry price as you not only get online play, but also upscaled graphics. For those into retro consoles, you can also pick up the very same collection, albeit without HD upscale graphics and online play, for the Japanese Sega Saturn. I would strongly recommend you go the digital route though, just for ease of access and to play this game online with friends. It's an absolute blast and one of the very best beat-em-ups of all time.